everybody, today we're talking about Spider-Man. More specifically, we're gonna rank all 11 Spider-Man movie villains from the worst to the best. As I go into this, I'm not ranking them based off of power, that's not really my thing. Instead, this is based off characterization, the performance, how compelling they are, how intriguing they are in general. So as I'm talking, go ahead and tell me down below in the comments section, how do you rank the Spider-Man movie villains? Which ones do you love? Which ones do you hate? Let's have a nice, lively, yet respectful discussion. Now before we get started, this video is brought to you by Amino. Amino is a totally free smartphone app, which is based basically a network of communities for just about every interest in the entire world. You can find an Amino for almost anything. Personally, I've been spending the most time on the one for Marvel, for Black Panther, and the TV show The Office, where I've been debating people over which season is the best. Obviously, it's season two. Once you join a particular Amino, you can browse the feed of featured posts. You can also find fan art, quizzes, polls, and wikis. But the best part of this app is that you're able to find people who are interested in the same thing that you are and talk with them. You're able to chat using the text, voice, or avatar chat options. I posted a poll in the Marvel Amino asking who is the best Spider-Man movie villain. Download the app and join the Marvel Amino to cast your vote. To download Amino for your smartphone, follow the links down in the description. Once you download the app, be sure to follow me. My name is Sean Chandler Talks About. With that said, let's get started. Coming in in last place is the Rhino from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now this was a complete and total misfire. They cast a great actor in Paul Giamatti, but essentially the role was meant to be just an extended cameo to set the character up for the Sinister Six movie that never happened. And the tease that they gave us here was shockingly bad and hammy. I mean, he's just in the movie going, that's his performance in the movie. For the Rhino, it was annoying, it was over the top. There's no real characterization, just an angry Russian yelling with a bad accent. And so all in all, whatever they were going for, they utterly failed at it. Coming in at number 10 is Venom from Spider-Man 3. Now in the comics, Venom is a phenomenal character, but it's well documented that Sam Raimi wasn't crazy about putting Venom in this movie, and it really shows. Whether you're talking about the Eddie Brock character as this rival photographer, or the characterization of Venom himself, I don't think either one particularly worked or came off menacing, scary. It was just one more villain in the movie, and worst, it made the Venom character come off so silly and cartoonish when you had Tover Grace's head on the Venom body in the final sequence that just made for a total waste of a great character. At number nine is Electro from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Once again, we've got a great actor cast in the role, but the characterization they went for really does not work or fit properly in the movie for two big reasons. The first one is that when he's Max Dillon at the beginning, it's so campy that it's out of tone with the rest of the movie. The second problem here is that the version of Electro that they went with is a fairly common villain trope in superhero movies. It's the same story that you had in the Riddler from Batman Forever. It's Syndrome from The Incredibles. It's Killian from uh, Iron Man 3. So it's a very familiar type of villain to see. With that said, some of the action sequences with him are pretty phenomenal. That's why he comes above the two below him. At number eight were the Shockers from Spider-Man Homecoming. Now, I didn't have any particular problem with either one of these characters as just henchmen in this movie. They fit that role perfectly fine, had a nice foil in there, and as a henchman, they were more compelling than most henchmen. However, the Shocker is supposed to be a little bit more than just a random henchman to the Vulture, so that was a little bit disappointing. But overall, no real issues with them, just underutilizing the Shocker as a character. At number seven is the Sandman from Spider-Man 3. Now, I really like Thomas Hayden Church's performance in this role. I think he makes him a lot more sympathetic than he might have otherwise been. Also think just the character of Sandman in general is a very cinematic type character that looks interesting on screen. The problem here is that first off, because the movie was overstuffed with different characters and villains, he didn't really get to live up to his potential in this film. The second problem is it always really bothered me that they retconned Uncle Ben's death in the film. But overall, there was a lot to really enjoy about this version of Sandman. At 
number six, we've got Green Goblin from The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Now, what makes this version work really is the Harry Osborn arc that happens throughout the first half of the film. We understand him as someone that just watched his father die, who has this broken, distant relationship with Peter Parker, and that is terrified for his own future that leads him to become a metaphoric and literal monster. And the fact that he was friends with Peter Parker makes the fact that he was responsible for Gwen Stacy's death so much more horrific and villainous. This is a version of Green Goblin I wish we could have gotten more time with. At number five is New Goblin from Spider-Man 3. Once again, this one works because we've spent so much time with Harry Osborn. We understand understand the anger and jealousy inside of him. Also, what makes him a little bit more interesting is that he's not out with this big villain scheme. He's just out for revenge against Peter Parker and Spider-Man. He also has a redemptive arc by the end of the film that kind of gives a nice book into this trilogy of Spider-Man films. At number four is the lizard from The Amazing Spider-Man. One of the things that Spider-Man villains tend to do really well is they come off more sympathetic than most villains. Once again, we've got a character here that is trying to do something good, that's researching things that matter, that could help a lot of people. He experiments on himself and it turns him into a monster. This sets up some great action sequences. In this one in particular, you get one of the absolute best Stan Lee cameos in that library fight scene featuring the lizard. But all in all, you get a sympathetic villain. You understand why he's doing what drove him insane. And the big thing holding this character up from being in the top three for me was the simple fact of the matter that we've seen this type of villain in Spider-Man movies before. At number three is Dr. Octopus from Spider-Man 2, the great Alpha Alfred Molina is given the opportunity to play this amazing, very Sam Raimi, campy villain. Once again, he's sympathetic like so many of these Spider-Man villains, but at the same time terrifying in the way that he's driven mad by his experiment that fuses to his back and starts to control him backwards. And as I mentioned before, this villain feels the most Sam Raimi of all of the villains in the Sam Raimi movies, even the way that he just used the tentacles in the different scenes. That first scene where he wakes up and the tentacles are tearing people to pieces, that was amazing. So all in all, this guy easily makes it into the top three. Our runner up is the Vulture from Spider-Man Homecoming. This is a very different type of super villain for a comic book movie because he's basically a common criminal that's broken bad. He's kind of like the Walter White of the MCU, and he's just trying to make money for his family to live a totally normal life where he's secretly a supervillain. You can understand where he's coming from, where he feels harmed by the system, and how he doesn't think that what he's doing is all that terrible. He's just slowly taken steps that's turned him into this monster that's willing to do anything to protect his family. And part of what makes it so great is Michael Keaton is able to make him terrifying without the character needing to be a sociopath that's killing a bunch of people. He can just be seated in a car holding a gun, talking to Peter Parker, and it's terrifying. That that's a great villain and that's a great performance. But for me, the best Spider-Man villain was the Green Goblin from the original Spider-Man movie. William Defoe is given so much room here to just chew up scenes and just do this amazing over-the-top performance that fits the movie perfectly. Part of the reason that he works so well is the movie spends a lot of time with him in family situations, interacting with his son, interacting with Peter Parker, and we see him being driven to madness throughout the course of the movie. Also, just the way that he makes things personal and going after Aunt May, dangling Mary Jane upside down. All sorts of things that make for a terrifying villain that we like, that we understand why, where he's coming from, why he's doing what he's doing, and that he's somewhat embarrassed by what he's doing at the end of the movie that doesn't want his son to know what's happening. For me, this guy set the standard, set the bar so high that no one has topped William Defoe's Green Goblin in the 15 or so years since this movie came out. So he is the number one one Spider-Man movie villain for me. But how about you? How do you rank the Spider-Man movie villains? Go ahead and tell me down below in the comments section. I'd love to hear your take on it. And remember to download the Amino app and join the Marvel Amino to cast your vote for who is the best Spider-Man movie villain. You can find the link for it down below where you can get it for totally free. And if you're new to my channel, please consider clicking that subscribe button. I do movie reviews, TV reviews, ranking videos. But the key thing is 
I don't want to just talk about movies. I want to talk about movies with you. So drum me down in the comment section. Give me your ranking. Tell me which ones you love, which ones you hate. Try to keep it respectful. And as always, thank you for watching.